All right, so to have your uh, Calendly be redirected to from phone sites with pre-populated information, it's pretty simple. You just need to grab the URL for whichever event type that you have set up. You might, I think the default for most people, they don't even think to, to do this, but um, I think the default is just to have one Calendly set up for um, their account, but you can set up what are called event types. And by that, I mean like if I wanted to set up um, something for like phone sites or like CRM setup or you know something like that, right? Um, you could set up these different event types. Uh, so like if you are maybe like a real estate agent or insurance agent or something like that, but you're also selling phone sites funnels on the side, you could set up a, a Calendly with phone sites uh, event types and then just share out this link to someone, right? So I'm going to go ahead and strip off the the month um, parameter there in my URL and then copy this because this is all you need. You just need calendly.com forward slash your username and then possibly an event type, right? I'm going to copy that and I'm, I'm going to go over to phone sites and I'm going to go to the settings tab of my uh, main site here. And as you can tell, this is just a test page. So let's dump this into um, the redirect here. I'm going to change this from, uh, I had it redirected to this other page right here, right? I'm going to change this to external URL and then replace Google with that Calendly. Notice I have attached data turned on. So whenever I have attached data turned on, it's going to add whatever fields um, data to the URL. I'll show you that here in a second. And that way it should then pre-populate in Calendly. So let's go ahead and select save here. I got to go make a change though back over here on the page, the design page. I got to turn off these two custom fields and I'm going to put my name and email back on. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, I don't need Calendly anymore. Just close those. I don't need that. And let's select review. All right. So now if I go ahead and submit my information here, And then, as you can see, it's redirected to my Calendly. And then I want to go ahead and schedule for Friday. And that, that time's fine. Confirm. And then there you go. So now it pre-populated the name and email address that uh, I had submitted on that first page, the phone size page. And now one other thing, so you would schedule this event. But one other thing, too, here in phone sites, or sorry, in Calendly, is if you're not aware of this, you can set up a redirect. So under the confirmation page, this might be something that you is only available under the pay plan though, perhaps. So I have um, on confirmation, it's going to display redirect to an external site. And then I could have this go to uh, another phone sites page if I wanted to. So let's see here. I could set this up to go to, this is a blank page. Uh, let's see if there's anything up here. This is just another form, right? So I, I mean, it wouldn't make any sense for someone to be resubmitted back here. But as you can see, like this could be something else. It could be like a video or something like that, that you're still educating the, the prospect on what to expect before the actual call. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's select view here. And if I copy that in, copy the URL, go back over to Calendly, drop that in, save and close. And then um, let's just go through my funnel again really quickly so I can show you what, what they would see on their end. So GoDaddy is great. Let's go. Let's book a time here. Confirm. Schedule events. Oh, come on. Schedule it. Oh, come on. What is it not like here? There we go. Come on. What is the problem? 
over here. And it's gonna redirect here to the phone size page. And there you go. Oh, yes, you can have the phone number pre-populate as well. There's a slight workaround for that. Reason for that is because Calendly um, for their phone number field, they require an area, or sorry, a, a country code. And um, our field for phone sites does not uh, require that. So someone could not add that in there. And then what would happen is uh, Calendly will format the phone number that comes over from phone sites as the wrong country code. So for example, um, like if I were to put in the leading number of four for like 412 for the Pittsburgh area code number, then that phone number, when it gets pre-populated over in Calendly, it would show up with a Swiss flag right over here. You don't see a flag right here right now because I made a change and I'll show you that change here in a second, but, um, where this country code, uh, selector is, it would default to, I think 41 is for Switzerland. Anyways, let's close that. Let's show you what tricks, uh, are up my sleeve for your question here. If you go back over to phone sites, you're going to need to turn off the phone field and add in a, another phone field with a custom field identifier here. So, um, and you can put the email down here too, if you wanted to, that if you prefer to have email after phone. But the reason why I had to turn the default off is because Calendly um, recognizes A1 for the, what was that at? For the phone number field right here. So in order to have my parameters come across in my URL and for that to pre-populate, pre-fill down here, I need to use a value of A1 over here under phone. So you can, of course, add in here like phone, phone number, cell phone, whatever you want to call that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to hop back over to Calendly. So back in the, the event types that we have set up in here, you're going to find the one that you want for your phone sites funnel. Go in here, edit this. You want to change the invitee questions. And name, email, and phone. I think this one too. These are the uh, the default questions that are populated for an event type. Um, now each one of these will have uh, a certain field type. So like if I, close, or if I click into phone number, the default answer type here is phone number. But I changed that to one line. And again, the reason for that is because phone number is going to have like a little box that shows up for where you would select the, the country code. I don't want that. I want this to be one line so it doesn't have any sort of country code issue. And then I'll go ahead and select apply here. And I don't need to make any changes here. I did keep this as a required field. Uh, now I'll go ahead and select save and close. And then this is all saved. Let's go ahead and test this out. Now I'll just go to refresh this. And then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So it's properly formatted. Well, not necessarily properly formatted phone number, but it has seven digits as you'd expect. Select let's go. And there we go. So let's go ahead and work through the calendar scheduling here, confirm. And so now we have the name, my fake name. <laughs> uh, my email and then my phone number pre-populated and then we would be good to go to go ahead and schedule the event. Let us know if you have any other questions.